I have right here another notebook to check out. It's a budget orientated Chinese one from a brand that I have never actually checked out before. It's Yippo or Yipo. Don't know how to pronounce it properly. And this model is the 737S. No, it is not a Boeing aircraft. 13.3 inch notebook that has four gigabytes of RAM and Atomex 5Z 8300. Yes, another one. But the good points of it is it does have a large 120 8 gigabyte eMMC drive. So it's a similar kind of setup to what I reviewed, which was the Jumper Easy Book 2. That was a 14 inch one. That actually turned out to be an okay notebook. I'm hoping this will be similar. So let's get started with the unboxing. This one I picked up from gearbest.com. I was on pre order for a while and I didn't actually expect it to come. It took probably about a month in total from when it was up on pre order. So this isn't actually the first box it came in, it came in a huge, gigantic second box which literally took up my whole table so i had to pull it out of that and i've kept it in this wrap here that it was in so it was bagged up twice so i guess protection from any rain or whatever any water damage so not a bad looking box you see it has kind of a macbook look and feel about it like, like most chinese devices out there the notebooks and laptops and things they often do copy apple products and along the side there, well, there's the barcode and the specs don't seem to be, okay, they're listed on the side. So there they are, their product name, the 737S, and it does have a 1080p screen on it, which most notebooks with this price range don't normally have. And you see the weight of it there, 1.25 kilos, but I'll check that out too on my scales. So no doubt this was probably already open and inspected like what they normally do gearbest before they send products out. Oh, it seems I'm opening it up upside down. Flip that around. Oh, okay, and they've gone to an extra step of putting bubble wrap around it. Well, that's good, that's gonna protect it. All right, I'll just put that to a side for a second. Because I wanna see what the power supply is. All right, so there's a little card in here saying, laptop, simple, high tech. Yeah, all right. <laughs> okay, that's just how to use Windows 10, the port layout, yada, yada, yada. Uh, power supply, where are you? There it is. Okay, so it's a, ah, an EU plug. I wasn't expecting that. I was thinking it would probably just be the Chinese two-prong US, two-prong style. So DC in charging. And this right here is rated to five volts, three amps. So that's gonna be hopefully reasonably quick. Not a bad size and that feels very light. Hopefully it's of reasonable quality. Okay, so I'll get all this junk and box stuff out of the way. So you see right here on the right side of it, we have a full size SD card slot, something the jumper doesn't have. USB two or three port, I'll check that out later on, and a mini HDMI, not micro, but mini this time. Along the back, just a serial number, barcode, and on the left side you see the DC in there, and the second USB two or three port, because it's not colored blue for some reason, and then the 3.5 minute headphone jack, this will be just a status LED, I would say, and then a microphone. Now the bottom of it, that's made out of alloy, which is good because that should be then transferring heat away from the Atom chipset onto the whole back rear housing. So this will basically be like a massive huge heat sink if Yepo have done the job right and designed it so there's a thermal pad transferring that heat onto it, of course. So four rubber feet, they feel very solid. And then we have a whole bunch of screws holding this onto what feels like plastic on the top. The top of it has the Yepo or Yep O, however you pronounce that logo there, then that's going to be backlit because that actually goes through to the rear of the IPS panel or the TNT panel, whatever it has. All right, so to open it up for the first time, uh, rather large bezels. I'll just look at the keyboard now. So, touchpad has a plastic feel, the palm rest, that's plastic. And the keys seem to have quite a reasonable amount of travel to them. I can see the height of those keys there. 
There is a little bit of flex. I'm pushing down very hard there. I'm just noticing that there are rubber feet on every corner of the, the screen bezel there, which isn't too bad. Now, just how far will the screen recline back? Let's have a look. It almost lies completely flat there. So that is good. You don't often see that. Normally they limit you to around about there or something where it won't end up tipping back. But since it's not a touch screen, you're not really going to be tapping it. So that's not too bad. It's good to see that they've given us a full angle there. So on the front up top, we have a 1.3 megapixel webcam or one megapixel webcam there. And I will check out the quality of that. And just have a look at the lid to see if there's any flex in that. Now this, that feels to be, that's plastic, the lid. So it's only, only part that has metal is the bottom of it. There's a bit of flex in that pressing down, so I am hope that the screen won't end up touching the keyboard and getting scratched. Alright, so let's get this powered on. Power button is at the top here, so hopefully I won't end up hitting that when I tap the backspace key and put it into sleep, because that doesn't actually have any more resistance than any of those other buttons on there, which is a bit of an error, really. All right, so an account has already been set up, admin. So someone's already gone in here and just gone through maybe the pre, the after sale inspection, perhaps. And for some reason, it's come up in tablet mode windows, even though, of course, this doesn't have a touch screen. I'm gonna to have to get out of that. Okay, so free available space. They've done something strange here. They've partitioned the 128 gigabyte eMMC that's on there. So we have 23 gigabytes free on the Windows partition, and then they've created that second one, which gives us 80 gigabytes free to install your games and music and whatnot. So that might be a good thing because then if you actually do like a factory reset on this, it's not gonna affect what's on the second drive. So the screen is glossy display and it does have this protector on it that I'm going to pull off. Okay, that was a little difficult to get off. Doesn't look too bad, this screen. I want to have a look at those viewing angles, but it's a shame it's not a matte screen. So anti-reflective coating that we had on the Jumper EasyBook 2. I would actually prefer that. So you can see the colors are shifting out there. I don't believe this is an IPS panel. I think it's actually a, uh, a TF1 or, or different tech. No, that's probably not IPS. So the viewing angles there from left and right, up and down, that's, yeah, that's shifting out. So you have to really look at that straight on to, to not have the colors and shifting out. So maximum brightness, I'll just check that out. Uh, where is the brightness controls? Okay, function key. Okay, so that's full brightness, which doesn't seem too bad. So here's the screen front on. Doesn't look bad. I'm gonna have a look now in system. Now the mouse pad has a plastic feel to it, kind of firm. They're quite firm actually, the mouse buttons left and right. So there we go, the four gigabytes of RAM, Windows 10 Home. And I need to connect to the internet in order to activate that. So device manager, have a look and see what wireless N chipset they have used. So it's only wireless N, unfortunately, which is a bit of a shame. So a closer look at that, that touchpad. As I said, it's got like a plastic feel to it. It's not glass or anything like that, not in this price range. And you can hear the, the mouse clicks. That is very loud. It seems to resonate through the plastic in here. That's not helping. Now, it doesn't seem to support any gestures. Oh, no, hang on. Two tap. No. No, it doesn't seem to support, or oh, it does. It's actually just popped up on the screen, but a little bit slow there. And if I use the swipe down, it doesn't seem to have at least that annoying one that I find, which is the swipe down, minimize or maximize. The size of it is good, and I can definitely close and open windows here without any problems. So it looks like it's gonna be at least a usable touchpad. Now this is one area where the Jumper EasyBook 2 failed for me as it could not power an external hard drive. Let's see if the 737S here can. Uh, so far so good. It's definitely spinning right up. 
and yes it has just popped up in windows there and i will see if i can open windows explorer to have a look what's inside the drive and yes i can so that is good it is at least powering an external hard drive and the second usb port looking good yes that also works so i've just connected up to the internet i want to have a look very quickly or should I say, I listen to the loudspeakers this has on board. So I'm just going to go into YouTube. Okay, they have a bit of volume to them, but they have some distortion, like a vibration coming from within. I can't really see where the speaker grills are, but it looks like the sound is coming out from just along, along, along here there, there's a gap. And lastly, just have a look at the weight. It's actually lighter than what they claimed, at least on my scales here, it's 1.17 kilos. And the thickness comes in at 20 millimeters there. Now that isn't with the rubber feet. If I go along to where the rubber foot is there, then that's 22 millimeters. So it's not the thinnest notebook. Oh, I almost forgot the internal EMMC, the storage, is a Samsung brand one, which is really good to see. Okay, so that's the unboxing of the Yepo 737S. My initial first impressions are that the screen isn't too bad. It's good to see when we've got a 1080p display here in this price range. Normally, they are only 768p ones in there, so a lower resolution. Uh, the viewing angles aren't particularly good. It is glossy. It does have nice deep blacks and quite a cool white screen the way it is calibrated, but all in all, I think it's an okay display, again, considering the price range. Now the trackpad, mostly plastically, it does have loud mouse buttons. So when you click on those, they make a very clicky clack kind of noise and a little bit noisy to the keyboard, but it has reasonable travel on the keys, tiny little bit of a bouncer as well. And good to see that both of the USB ports on there, they do power external hard drives and the audio quality seems all right. The build of it, mostly plastic. We do have those large bezels and the only metal they have used is the alloy rear. Now that is also quite a good thing that they've done that because that should be transferring heat away from the chipset and onto that metal rear as mentioned in the beginning of the video. So I will be back with the full review. I'll check out the benchmarks, thermals, and battery life. This does have an 8,000 milliamp hour battery in there. So hopefully we'll, we'll get Reasonable battery life. The Jumper Easy Book 2 has a larger battery, which is 11,000 milliamp hours, and that got a good score. So I'm expecting a little less on this one, but I will be back with that full review. So hopefully, I will see you then.